What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Okay, so two colossal things happened over the weekend. Number one, Abyss Rising is legal. Saw a huge influx of competitive decks coming out of that set. You know, Atlantia Mermill Prophecies had a pretty decent showing. You know, Madoche started getting that power card so that they can be viable. And then second, YCS Seattle Tacoma, which kind of laid out the blueprint probably for the next six weeks of the regional circuit in competitive play. Uh, definitely saw a huge change in the power decks as opposed to YCS Rhode Island. This was probably evident by the fact that Mermill put in seven top uh, 32 decks in its first ever showing in a top four finish and a top second finish, or excuse me, a second place finish. So um, I feel like it's time to do with the top five decks of the format, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Hierarchy. Going to start number five, Girgia. Girgia did not have a strong showing at this event. I know I had them first last time. I was even a little hesitant to do that because I still feel like Girgia is a little offensively challenged. You know, um, the, the synchro plays aren't really there unless you're running the Kara Curry version. I don't like the fact that the Girgia Mermail matchup is awful. Uh, Mermails have it all over Girgia, and quite frankly, I said this about the Insector matchup too. When your most optimal play turn one is setting a monster, that plays into the hands of decks like Insector because they have access to blowing up your monster, your Girgia armor, turn one very easily with things like Hornet or you know cards like Genix Undyne, where they can blow your card up and still go plus one not to mention you know blowing up the card they still end up searching cards and so on and so forth uh, there's also mind control where they can just steal your gear to your armor and exceed and make sure that you don't get your effect and kind of set you back um i think that yeah chaos dragons kind of fell off the map and that's fine but you don't want to exchange one bad matchup for another one i like their dino rabbit matchup a lot i think that this deck has it all over dino rabbits but the only other really great matchup i see in the format is kind of like heroes and Heroes are basically a non-factor, so because of the poor performance and kind of the non-optimal matchups right now, I don't really like Geargeus as much as I did after Rhode Island. Number four, Agents. Um, Agents is one of those decks where I look at I look at the results and they do speak for themselves. You know, five spots in top 32. You know, two spots in top eight. You know, Julian Wong and Simon He both top, but I'm, I'm I'm wondering if this is the deck or the player, and I'm actually thinking it's the latter. I've always thought that Geargeus are, or excuse me, that Agents are a little um, consistent. Like, they've always had a little bit of consistency problems, mainly because, you know, Venus and Earth only have a lot of utility in, like, the first three turns of the duel. After that, they kind of are useless. But, you know, they still, the deck, the way the deck is structured, it's structured a lot like Chaos Dragons, except you don't have to worry about the random aspect of milling your really good boss monsters, like Hyperion, BLS, Chaos Sorcerer. Tragodia, Christie, and stuff like that, and I think that's pretty much the way that the deck wins. You know what I mean? It leaves all of its resources in its hand, and at any given point, it can kind of build cast dragons and just drop beast after beast after beastly boss monster. You know, 2,700 monsters that have many Dalkon dragon effects. Uh, not to mention, you know, there are two completely different viable uh, builds of this deck. I mean, you can run your chaos, you can run your chaos agents. Which, I mean, that got two top eight spots. You, another version, top 32, the Trooper, Christia version, which is excellent because Christia is a fucking monster of a card. Once you get her on the field, there are decks like Windups and Atlanteans that basically just fall apart. So, number three, Dino Rabbit. I'm probably higher on Dino Rabbit than a lot of people are, but I'm sorry, the macro cosmos aspect is far too big. The fact that Mermail are going to be probably a top three deck for the rest of the format makes Dino Rabbit that much more appealing because you now look at Dino Rabbit against Chaos Dragons, it's not nearly a struggle as it used to be because Macro can eliminate their graveyard, which kind of eliminates the uh, fear of the big Chaos Monsters. You look at a deck like Agents and you know it can really hurt the Hyperion plays. Any deck that needs its graveyard as a resource or cards that constantly activate in the graveyard like Dark World, they're going to be adversely affected by this macro. You know, you look at cards like Doka, which can absolutely tear apart decks like Windups and Insectors by itself. The fact that you're running macro also is going to really, really hurt in sectors because they might see an infuse of play and uh, their playability might go up because of the event or because of how this event structured. And I look at Dino Rabbit and it's like, yeah, they lost consistency, but they kind of just added that back with the macro element. And the macro element is a huge factor right now. Number two deck, Mermills. Mermills took seven top 32 spots in their first ever legal YCS. Uh, this deck got fourth place. This deck got second place and it got eighth place. I mean, it 
it just dominated. Uh, Mermill is a deck that is extremely fast and extremely consistent. And, I mean, just turn one, it can plus to death just off Genix Undyne. Nothing in the deck is restricted right now. So it has all its power plays. It has backer removal. It has monster removal. Uh, Deep Sea Diva plays are just flat out stupid because that card gives it so many options. The mind control plays are stupid. Uh, Mulan Glacier is an absolute game stealer. I've never, well, I've only won one game ever when somebody actually resolved that against me. Um, and I had the luck sack the hell out of them. I look at this deck and I do think that it can be shut down with a couple of cards. But, you know, if if the, the players are smart with Mermills, you know, they'll almost certainly win game one outside of something like Dino Rabbit. Because I do feel like that matchup is awful. But I look across the board against the agents, against Geargia, against, you know, decks like Chaos Dragons. And every single matchup, I have to give Mermill the edge. Now, when people start figuring this deck out, maybe it'll fall. But when you still have people innovating, adding cards like Spirit Art, Water, you know, uh, this deck is just, it is really, really damn, it's just freaking scary right now. Now, number one deck, Windups. Windups had a serious falling from grace after YCS Rhode Island, and I think that's the reason why they came back so strong is because you saw a lot more people, uh, you know, kicking out hand traps. That plays in the wind-up sands. You saw a lot of people playing no traps. That plays in the wind-up sands because, you know, all of these no trap decks pretty much share one singular um element and that's their reliance on monster effects and the turn one shock lock play i mean you can still call monster effects set a bottomless set a deep prison or a solemn warning and it's like well what are you going to do against a field like that if you don't have dark hole you know what i mean that's like mermills you can just lock them out of monster effects and they don't really have anything that they can do you play a deck like uh prophecy and it's just call spells how do they do anything i mean you, you just basically win um, windups have the best XC and extra deck game in all of Yu-Gi-Oh because they kind of have a tool for every single card and you know their monsters can change their levels uh, this is a deck that can OTK and also put just about any rank 4 that it wants on the field it can make any rank 3 just given time it can make all the 5's and 6's pretty much um, I look at windups and I also like the fact that you know, when I look at the mainstream deck, it doesn't have a single bad matchup. It can run Deep Prison and Macro effectively, but isn't hurt by either one of those cards. So, um, the fact that Windup also put seven decks in top 32 helps, and I don't really think that Windups are going anywhere right now. I just think that they had a really poor showing because, unfortunately, Windup's biggest flaw is the fact that every single hand trap in the game absolutely wrecks the deck. But when people aren't playing those hand traps, uh, you can see that Windups is still definitely one of the at top echelon decks and it also got third place so let me know what you guys think of my top five what is your top five personally thank you for watching as always and i'll talk to you later